Is this another stagnant film? Not just any stagnant film. These are early rushes for the next Sam Rosenstock project. Uh Uh-huh. What's it called? Footage. Sam wants to make it seven hours long, but I think I can talk him up to nine. Oh, catchy tune. Who's the band? That's Toenail Memory. Big up-and-comers. Turns out they're Rosenstock fans, so they're doing the soundtrack. I smell a tie-in. Some kind of immediate race? Ow. I have a feeling this is going to be a smash. Don't recognize the foot, though. Oh, he's a newcomer. Theodore something. A $300 million budget and all we can get for our lead foot is a newcomer? Relax. You know Sam likes to use fresh talent. But I had a chat with him, and it's taken care of. Two words. Jonas Minkus. I love it. Huge star. Dynamite ankles. How does Theodore take the news? We're about to find out. He's our two o'clock. Thinks he's coming in to do a pitch. A pitch? Afternoon, Theodore. Dunk Barleyclef. Please come in. Is that a limp? Uh, just taking extra care of the foot. Smart. This is Vivian Mountjoy. Well, what have you got for us today? Something a bit different. It's a love story. Love what? Story, but told through music. So it's a circular narrative. No, it has a beginning, middle, and end. And it maintains the illusion of a consistent narrative thread. I'll show you what I mean. Once upon a time, a blue-collar boy found love with a young girl from the more auspicious end of town. Their love could not be bound by so class so there came to pass nothing they could not surmount with her daddy's bank account and they lived happily ever after the end hmm when you said you had a pitch for us, I was prepared for another Stan Brackage clone. I was not expecting incomprehensible gibberish. Uh, Ted, can I call you Ted? I don't know much about art, and I don't know what I like. But I get what you're going for here. You want to be avant-garde. I think that's great. But we don't make art house films. We make movies that people want to see, that they'll, you know, pay to see. The way you've arranged these scenes one after another in... Sequential. Sequential order. You can't expect people to wrap their heads around that. And by the way, that music, nobody listens to music like that. Can I call you Ted? Bottom line is, there are proven formulas. If we believed people wanted something different... Which they don't. We'd make something different. Which we won't. Anything else, Ted? Can I call you Ted? Oh, there is something else. It's a message from Sam Rosenstock. You're off the film. What was Sam thinking when he hired that guy? He sent in a decent foot shot. What a doormat. I wonder if I can call him Ted. Attention, Kmart shoppers. You're in the wrong building. Kmart is across the street. This is a doctor's office. Hi, I don't have an appointment, but I twisted my ankle, and I was hoping Dr. Diplodocus could take a look at it. Is your health care universal or paramount? Uh, United Artists. Have a seat. 
The doctor will see you shortly. WODD Radio, Bluebird. Tired of news, weather, and sports? We've got the commercials you crave. Another 40 minute block of program free advertising begins now. You've got a lot of nerve showing up here. And none of it is damaged, so I think your ankle will be fine. There's something else, though. The other night I fell asleep with gum in my hair, and when I woke up, it was in my mouth. I was afraid you'd say that. Theodore, I'm on a level with you. Or you can level by yourself. But the fact is, you have a terminal case of hypochondria. You've got one foot in the grave. Oh, no. How long do I have? Until this movie ends. Oh. I guess that will be soon. Well, that depends on how soon your conflicts are resolved. If you can manage to keep your affairs intentionally complicated, you might have a chance of prolonging your life indefinitely. Bear in mind, if you do that, the audience watching this film will become bored, restless, hungry. Some might resort to cannibalism. I'm sick and tired of hearing about what the audience wants. My life is more important. They can sit in their seats and rot for all I care. I'd suggest you think it over. No, I'm sorry to cut this short, but I have to go conduct choir practice for chiropractors. Here, take too many of these and call me in the morning. I don't have your number. That's okay, I'll give it to you over the phone. Lord and Cecil Taylor! If you don't open this door on the count of Monte Cristo, I will beat you to the punch! Would it kill you to play something with a nice melody? All right, where is he? Where is he? Oh, there he is. How do you expect me to finish my first novel with all that horrible noise in the background? Honey, calm down. You're bunions. I don't care. You're writing a novel? Reading one. Does it have a story? Ah, uh, a novel with a story? What do you come up with this stuff? It's stream of consciousness prose. How about a nice Milton Babbitt tune? Mom, you don't understand. I'm writing songs for my musical. Oh, here we go again with the musical. You haven't left your room for days. You just sit in here writing love songs. Romantic love is a delusion. It's just an excuse for people to procreate. And if we've taught you anything, it's that procreation is a selfish act of forcing life on someone who never asked for it. I'm worried about you, Theodore. I think you need help. I'll say. Would you get a load of this place? Who's this weirdo? Wait, don't tell me. Uh, okay, now tell me. That's Lou Android Weber. He's my hero. Hero? Did he screw up his big break in show business? Where do you see yourself in ten years? Uh, probably in a mirror or some other reflective surface. You must think life is one big ha-ha joke. Well, it's not. It's a series of small, inconsequential jokes and bad puns. After I retire, who's going to take over the ready-made shop? Ah, oh, my bunions! Theodore. There's a therapist downtown. His name is Zen Godchok. A therapist? He's one of the best in the country, maybe even the state. And he seems very nice in his infomercials. Hey, your appointment's on Monday. It's in the theater district, so dress warm. You don't want to catch your death of a salesman. I wish I wasn't such a pushover. You are not a pushover! Yeah, you're right. I see you're down in the dumps. I used to have a place there myself. It was a real dump. I'm surprised your parents can afford my preposterous rates. I'm going to ask you some questions, and I'd like you to give me the first answers that come to mind. Please state your answers in the form of a question. I'll form my questions in a state of disarray. I mean data ray. First question. How do I get to Carnegie Hall? Why don't you go to Carnegie Hell? Excellent. Who's more talented, Tom Petty or Laurie Petty? Never mind, that's a petty question. Do you understand why you're here today? Is it because I'm a hypochondriac? No, you're just imagining that. If it ain't broke, don't fixate. Your parents tell me you're antisocial. How do you feel toward other people? I like other people. I mean, I don't mind them. Theodore, you can be honest with me. Okay. I hate people. Nobody understands me. And nothing I do is ever good enough for anybody. I have no friends. Women avoid me like the plague avoids me. Last week I tried asking a reference librarian out on a date, but the library wouldn't let me take her out. We're never going to get anywhere until you tell me how you really feel. 
Ever get the feeling you're not being followed? I'm sorry, I don't follow. Have you read any of my books? Listen, whatever my parents are paying you, I'll double it by half if you tell them I'm cured. Throw in the towel and you've got yourself a deal. Send me to a therapist, will they? I am never setting foot in that house again. Just let one more person try and walk all over me. Ah! Wake up, man. The show's about to start. Show? Where am I? Whoa, man. You are really strung out. What'd you take? Tarantula hair? Cellophane? Alligator sweat? My foot is killing me. Are we underground? I don't remember seeing you around the colony, man. But that's probably because acid trip reflux has impaired my ability to recognize people. My name is Ezekiel Pudge. I'm Theodore. I work with representational imagery. I draw on the work of the American realist painters until the museum security guard catches me and throws me out, man. I aspire to be the next Edward Hopper because the last Edward Hopper didn't cut it. Hey, we better get to the main stage. What's happening? It's the imploding organic preventable, man! It's up ahead on the right. Listen, I just dropped some acid, so I'm going to go back and find it. We are the pet peeves of Blitberg's social elite. Non-conformists, freaks, rejects, open-minded free thinkers. If this does not describe you, then I suggest you leave because you're not wanted here. The theme of today's show is the complicity between our oppressive local government and the fat cats who control all the wealth in this town. Now, just a reminder before we get started. Today's performance was made possible by a generous grant from the Blitberg Endowment for the Arts and by charitable donations from some of the city's wealthiest residents. <clears throat> Our first story is entitled Clammy Ankles. The author, well, he needs no introduction. Performing the work will be Stella Skirmish. Once upon a time, Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. And a pretty good summer, too. But he turned into a crackhead. The end. Brilliant! There's a beginning, middle, and end, presented in sequence. It's almost like they were events from the author's life. No! This is a story about us, not about its maker! I see it as a Marxist critique of capitalism. What can be done for the exploited workers who don't have enough money to eat on? I would suggest they eat on a table like regular people. Then go to the bathroom like irregular people. The story needs a stronger ending. Maybe this Humpty Dumpty meets a nice girl. Then they live happily ever after. It would give the audience closure. Oh, close your mouth! Don't you know who wrote this story? It was... Settle down, everyone. He has a point. Lou Android Weber? I'm honored to be in your presence. You're my hero. Hero? The real heroes are out there standing up to police officers, the government, the military, 
Anyone in a position of authority. Subverting the establishment. That's what makes you a true hero. But thank you all the same. Uh, what's your name? Uh, Theodore. How about sharing some of your own work, Theodore? Happily ever after. The end. Theodore, next week we plan to hijack the broadcast signals in Blipberg to show everyone that art need not be diluted by commercial interests. I would like to have you write and direct a film that we can show during the broadcast. We'll help you with the production, of course. You want to help me? Well, after all, you are one of us. Popular culture enslaves the masses, keeps them distracted with vapid kids. Popular art helps the ruling classes, corner the market so they'll stay rich. Popular music is dull and flaccid, formula driven and watered down. Popular people are evil fascists bent on controlling the stupid town. Theodore, this reel contains a promotional ad for my upcoming short story collection, Red, White, and Blue Joie. I'd like you to splice it somewhere in my, uh, hour film. A commercial? Yes, with a secret liminal message, atonality is bad, non-representational art is evil, and must be abolished. But that's not true. What about the people who like those things? Popular culture is the airplane glue of the masses, Theodore. We've played by the rules of the system. 
We've tried selling our work as commodities in a marketplace. We've tried charming the bourgeoisie discreetly to convince them that different is good. But we can still barely afford this workspace. The time has come to dismantle the socio-economic infrastructure, or my name isn't misspelled in the credits. But my parents are part of that infrastructure. If you're going to fit in here, Theodore, you'd better start towing the line. Now get to work. You are not a pushover! We go on the air in five minutes. Where's Theodore? Here comes a guy. Maybe that's him. Well, Theodore, don't just stand there. Stand here, too. Take the film to Blazo in the control booth. He'll jam the signal. What is this pretentious nonsense? I don't know. It sounds like one of Theodore's songs. Oh, I miss him so much. <sighs> Me too. She pours some gin and he has a drink then falls to the floor. She stores his corpse with
least the last part made sense. Judas! Set out! Okay, everyone. Theodore, how could you? Shoot yourself in the foot like that. Dunk Barley Clef and Vivian Mountjoy insisted you were a trendsetter. They were so sure you'd be perfect for my division. What are you talking about? Why don't you go back to the Shrill building, you conformist? Yeah, and find a good shrink while you're at it. I'll bet you have a military-industrial complex. And a commodity fetish. Okay, fine. Lou, tell me how to get back to ground level. Ground level? Follow me, Theodore. Where did you get the idea that you were underground? That doesn't make sense. I fell into a manhole. That wasn't a manhole. That was a plot hole. Oh, I see. Well, I guess I'll be going. I'm sorry I let my avant-garde down. Some kind of immediate race? Hey, I don't know if I can go through this again. You might have a chance of prolonging your life indefinitely. Until this movie ends. Until this until this movie ends. 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 Until this mov